As this Diddy trial unfolds, things just keep getting stranger and stranger. A few days ago, I spoke about two women who claimed to be victims of Diddy. The accusers were Adria and Misha, who were going from platform to platform making allegations against Diddy. Quickly, these women went over the internet and many people started to rally behind them. While Adria's story wasn't out of the ordinary when it comes to Diddy allegations, Misha's story was and since I first heard it, it wasn't adding up. Misha claimed to be the victim seen in photos sitting on Diddy's lap with her face blurred out. Now, it's being revealed that there is no way Misha was the girl in that photo, as the woman in the photo was forced to come forward by the courts. And it's looking pretty clear that Misha and Adria were lying the whole time. Hey guys, I hope all is well. Welcome back to The Truth Is, where I drop new videos every other day exposing the truth. In today's episode, we will be talking about the identity of the girl in the DNG shirt. Let's get right into it. About a little over a week ago, I made a video talking about accusers Adria and Misha. They had been making their rounds around the internet, claiming they were victims of Diddy. This all started when Adria went on the Lino B YouTube channel and made some serious allegations against Diddy. She not only claimed that she was a victim, but she introduced the world to another accuser that we now know as Misha. Misha ended up doing an interview herself with Lino B, where she made some truly unbelievable claims. It was so unbelievable that I honestly couldn't believe any of it. Misha claimed that she was picked up by Diddy off the streets when she was only 12 years old. She then claimed that she was taken to Diddy's studio daddy house in New York City, where Diddy and his employee Harve Pierre had essayed her. She claimed that Diddy forced her to put on a DNG shirt and made her sit on his lap to take a photo, claiming that the photo that had been circulating online of an unknown woman sitting on Diddy's lap with her face blurred out wearing this DNG shirt was her. This was truly strange because this photo was actually used in a lawsuit that was filed by a Jane Doe victim back in November 2023, a whole year before Misha went on the Line OB channel. Misha claimed that she never filed a lawsuit and was rejected by many lawyers but somehow this photo was used in a lawsuit that was filed by the same law firm that represented Cassie in her lawsuit against Diddy. The Jane Doe who filed this lawsuit claimed it was her in the DNG photos and also told a very similar story to what Misha claimed happened to her. This Jane Doe claimed she was 17 when Diddy's employee Harp Pierre met her at a club and offered her the opportunity to meet Diddy in New York City. This is when she was taken to Diddy's studio, Daddy's house, and she was essayed by Diddy and his friends. So it appeared that something wasn't making sense. It couldn't be possible that both the Jane Doe and Misha were the same person in the photo. One of them had to be lying. Well, since day one, I called out Misha for clearly lying as most of her story wasn't adding up, especially after part of her allegation that she made was clearly taken directly from the movie Blank Twice. In the interview with Lionel B, Misha claimed that she was given snake venom during a Diddy event that made her remember things that were happening to her. She claimed she was given this snake venom by a witch looking lady and that she put the snake venom in everyone's drink. This is literally what happened in the movie Blink Twice. Honestly, a lot of her story came directly from this movie Blink Twice and I covered it in the last video. The movie Blink Twice was written all the way back in 2017 and the writer of the movie Zoe Kravitz claimed the movie was inspired by the Me Too movement, not by Misha. So it appears that Misha clearly on the spot took the plot of this Blink Twice movie and tried to use it as her victim story, either thinking people just wouldn't notice or simply just not knowing what to allege. Now, we have gotten the confirmation that we need that proves Misha has been lying the entire time, as the victim in the photo has finally come out to set the record straight. A few days ago, the courts ordered the Jane Doe in the photo with Diddy reveal her identity in order to be able to continue her lawsuit against him. Having no other choice, she came out and revealed her identity, and you guessed it, it's not Misha, not even close. The woman in the DNG shirt is a woman by the name of Anna Kane, and she looks nothing like Misha. Anna Kane was forced to reveal her identity, something she didn't want to do. She gave a public statement regarding the lawsuit, claiming, I had hoped to use a pseudonym in pursuing justice for what happened to me as a teenager. Defendants demand that I use my name was an attempt to intimidate me, but I am not intimidated. I am prepared to proceed and hold accountable those who have harmed me. This is the confirmation we needed to confront Misha and Adria for the lies they have been telling. Anna Kane filed this lawsuit back in November 2023, and she is the victim that is being represented by Cassie's lawyers. For those who still think that Misha is a victim, you're the victim of her lies. She has been caught lying multiple times about several things she said. To me, 
This proves what I said in my last video. In my opinion, Adria most likely put Misha up to this when Adria's lawsuit fell through because her lawyer said she was making things up. Talked to one of my clients because, as we know, we were having some issues about press. Who? Well, I was gonna. Say, I, didn't, I didn't want to put you on the spot, but you did have one person complain. Yes, you just brought it up. <laughs> yeah, because I had a client who was more interested in talking about the press, not understanding the ramifications of these statements she was making that all of these statements she was making were one opening herself up to liability because she's talking about other people who are not in the lawsuit who she's not protected by litigation uh privilege and then all of the things that she said can be played in front of a jury to test her credibility in our lawsuit so adria was the one who signed a management deal with lionel b the man who was interviewing adria and misha <coughs> shout out to my boy my manager lionel b shout out to my boy my manager lionel b Shout out to my boy and my manager, Lionel B. We, we doing that on our next one. Uh, that Lionel B is trying to manage us or pimp us or guide us or tell us what to say. No, Lionel B had his, his platform before he ever met me. He contacted me like everybody else. And I was a fan of Lionel B. And I said, I would do your platform. And our numbers did so well. I asked him to manage me. And then I told him I am in direct contact with my girl, Misha. I want to bring her on, too. And then I told him I am in direct contact with my girl, Misha. I want to bring her on, too. And then I told him I am in direct contact with my girl, Misha. I want to bring her on, too. Because I've been referring to her. I want to let everybody know she's a real person. She didn't even want to talk. She wanted to remain Jane Doe because every time she called a lawyer and try to tell him her story, nobody will take her. But everybody want to get all the details so they can write their own independent book. They already made the movie Blink twice about us telling. She gave them the rights and the, the information. Back that she gave the, law the lawyers information and they made the movie blink twice. And there was this talk about, oh, it's you're just they're just ripping off. Uh, what about That's the lawsuit? Because the lawsuit has a lot of discrepancies. Is this Misha's lawsuit? Was she repped by Cassie's attorneys? Misha has not had a lawsuit because no lawyer will take her. Now, like, I'm scared about I don't I want to make sure I'm putting out the truth. Like, that's the other sure, thing that I'm sure. always I'm always being careful of. And I'm like, do you wrestle with that? And I guess I do want to ask that. Like, is has she has she sued? Did he? Do you know? Um, I believe she did have a uh a lawsuit going at some point but um i believe she did have a uh a lawsuit going at some point but um i believe she did have a uh a, a lawsuit going at some point but uh they actually ended up throwing it out because there was something uh, going on with her age now i know initially when she left diddy i think she was around 15 or 16 but at the time she told the officers that she was 17 so that kind of messed up her credibility and she said mm -hmm. the reason why she said she was 17 because she was afraid um to tell them her real age Okay, interesting, because that I'm glad that's point. clarified, because right, there was a case, I guess, uh, a while back, so that you could, that is the same Jane Doe, yeah. that now safe yes. to confirm? Yes, that's, that's her. And that, and that also, because that's the, I, people haven't, and I'm, and I'm not discrediting Misha, but I was wondering, was like, was that wait, person not Jane being Doe, honest or whatever, wait, because the there Jane were discrepancies. Case with the d &G, um, shirt is still ongoing. It wasn't thrown out. From but my understanding, there's, there's two young ladies that's trying to really come out with the same story. Misha told me that, you know, the other Jane Doe was kind of like taking her story, so I don't know, there's kind of like a... We got a death gray area on our hands. The same YouTuber who threatened to copyright strike anyone who reacted to his content, calling Misha and Adria liars. Adria already admitted that Lionel B was in business with her. Now, after Lionel B and Adria have been getting called out, it appears that Lionel stopped working with Adria. This is truly disturbing because Misha was trying to take the story of a real Diddy victim. She was trying to cash in and pretend to be a woman who was trying to keep her identity hidden. It's clear to me that Misha and Adria just wanted to make money. They were muddying the waters, making unnecessary drama that was taking away from the real victims. Diddy wants this. That's why he paid private investigators to convince influencers and YouTubers to get on his side. Who knows? There is a possibility that these people spitting this story were being paid by Diddy. Like I said before, when Diddy's lawyers proved these women were lying in court, it would hurt all the rest of the cases. Diddy's lawyers could start the argument that if these women were lying, maybe all of them are. We know Diddy is guilty as can be. The Cassie hotel footage proves that. He was trying to force Cassie back to his disturbing freak out parties. We know Diddy is a monster who has destroyed so many lives. But lying and making stories up to sue him and make money isn't how we're going to bring him down. This is only going to help him and honestly, those who are lying are disgusting human beings. How can you go on a platform and pretend to be a victim knowing that the real victim is out there? Recently, Misha has gone back on the Lionel B show to admit that she was lying. She admitted that she wasn't the girl in the shirt and claims that she just got mixed up, but still claims to be one of the women on the sushi table. Mind you, this 
this has already been debunked as well, as the woman on the sushi table has been identified, and again, it's not Misha. But here, she's still on the line OB show, claiming that she indeed was a victim of Diddy. The thing is, if she lied about being the girl in the DNG shirt, and lied about being the girl on the sushi table, and lied about her story that she got from the Blink Twice movie, how could anyone believe anything she is saying? I believe most people believed her because she was crying while saying the things she said. This won people over because of how emotional she was saying those things. To many people, this made them believe that she was telling the truth. But honestly, those were crocodile tears and she used that sympathy to her advantage. I would have played Misha admitting she was lying, but Lionel B already threatened to strike YouTubers using his content under fair use. But Misha admitted it out of her own mouth and pretended like it wasn't a big deal. The thing is, it is a very big deal. She had thousands of people rallying behind her championing her while she was lying the entire time. She was doing all of this for money, and it worked, which is sad. I don't want Diddy to get out of this one because of people like Misha and Adria, women who saw an opportunity to make some money and went for it. I believe at this point, some of these influencers and YouTubers could possibly be working for Diddy. The people who are interviewing Misha and Adria should be questioned, especially those who sign management deals with them as if they were celebrities. These people should be avoided as they knew this woman was lying but kept on spreading the lies for views. Like it was already revealed, Diddy was literally paying influencers to get on his side. So you guys are private investigators who have come to my private home asking about influencers? This is very uncomfortable, you guys. I don't know why. I'll, I'll explain. No, you're at my home. Okay, so, so you don't want to talk to us then? If I've broken some law? Absolutely not. And you have the thin blue... Is this... This is frightening. I, I think... Can you guys step away from my home? Well, we're in a public street, so the answer is no. But I'm not... Listen, I'm not, we're not trying to give you a hard time. We're, why we're, are you here? What do you mean? You're showing up at my house. We're very nice and respectful, and we will be. I just have two quick questions for you, and if you want to be interested in it, great. If not, I'll have a nice day. We're not... What is this? This is odd. So, you have to admit this is very weird. It always is, and people always ask the same question. I'm uh, <laughs> happy to explain to you. So what? Very, very simply, we're just hired to speak to a few people that do, you know, have a lot of followers and stuff like that on different platforms. What, is this about the Diddy stuff I report on? Somewhat, yes. Wow. Not necessarily Diddy stuff, but, you know, people are involved in just stuff like that. So basically, a very simple question is, is, are you paid to influence that, that that's the stories like that in any direction? No, not at all. That's all we wanted to know. Because if the company is, you know, they're looking into people who are... Are you guys going to pay me for this visit? Like, this is frightening. So, like, I'm honestly, I'm super... But, but, you have to admit, if I came to your house... And, like, I thought this was a joke. I thought I have a friend coming over business right now. Like, this is extremely weird for me. I have 100,000 followers. I, I'm not that, making any that's money. Why, that's one of the reasons why we're here. And that's the question that we're asking. If someone contact you, say, in the last six months and is paying you to influence in a certain way. No. Either, either one way is it illegal way. If, they, if somebody would have? So the answer is no. Oh, okay, I wish somebody would have. I'd love to be not. making real money and, off and, this. Let me talk for two seconds. I'll explain. Try to make you feel better. I mean, this is very terrifying. Simply, very very simply, if somebody was paying you, right. the company we work for just asking that question. Right. If somebody was, they would just be willing to possibly offer you money to know who and see what's going on. To oh, try wow. to well, Do you really think all of these YouTubers and influencers said no? Some of them took the money and some of them are secretly working for Diddy. I advise you to stop giving attention to Misha and Adria as they have both been exposed as liars. If you continue to support them, all you're doing is supporting the lies and hurting the real victims. Think about it. Cassie was a real victim, but she never did an interview about any of this. She told her lawyer her story and they went after Diddy. Same thing with the Jane Doe. She told her story to her lawyer, but she didn't go around doing a hundred interviews to get attention or charging for those interviews. That's how victims behave, not like we're seeing from Adria and Misha. I want to know your guys' thoughts below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.